every test, every trial in life, no matter what the nature of it is, it involves my faith. Do I believe him or do I not believe him? Am I going to trust him or not going to trust him? He won't tell me why. He didn't give me any understanding. But how, how am I going to respond? Why waste the time of hurting and pain and suffering and whether it's financial or physical or emotional? Why waste all that time and not get anything from it? when you can profit from every single heartache, burden, and trial. Welcome to In Touch, the teaching ministry of Dr. Charles Stanley. Have you ever faced a situation that left you asking why? Today's lesson from 1 Peter chapter 5 reminds us that God always has something to teach us in even the most confusing situations. Listen carefully for sure footing from Scripture when we don't understand why. I want you to turn, if you will, to 1 Peter. And um, Peter is writing to Christians who are undergoing difficulty and hardship and pain. So let's just start with this uh, sixth verse uh, of the um, fifth chapter. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. Casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But listen to what he says. He says, but resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. And then watch this 10th verse, and I'll tell you why I want you to see this in a moment. After you have suffered for a little while, notice he says a little while. Or well, somebody says, yeah, but this has been going on for 8 years, 10 years, or 20 years in my life. He says a little while. Time is not the same with Almighty God. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So when we think about how God works and how he operates and so forth, I think about oftentimes our first question is, God, why would you let this happen? That's not the most important question. And so what I want us to look at this morning is this simple question. When we don't understand why, then what? So I want us to think about how people respond for a few moments and then how we ought to respond. We're not talking about why, because we could talk forever about why. But that's not the question. And that's not even the question God wants me to ask. The question is not why did God let it happen, but now that it has happened, now that it's going on in a person's life, how am I to respond? First of all, do you see these things in your life as God getting your attention about something? And that's always the right response. God, are you getting my attention about something in this? And sometimes he does have to use very strong means to get us to focus on the fact that he's in charge. We're to walk in his way and his will, and disobedience will bring some form of discipline. Then you have to ask this question. And is this something that God is doing? Is God somehow testing my faith? Does God want to strengthen my faith? Now, watch this. Listen carefully. He doesn't ever just want to test your faith. He wants to try and test your faith in order to grow it. He's not, in other words, he knows how you're going to respond. But he wants you to learn to respond in the right fashion. And that is when we get tested by whatever we're facing in life, God wants us to respond to recognize this is a test, not just to see what I'll do. God already knows what you're going to do. He knows how you're going to respond, but he wants us to understand this is always a growth area in my life, in your life. Whenever we get tested, we can't figure it out. We don't understand what God's doing. Whatever's going on, remember this. He is in the process of strengthening your faith because we'll face things that we can't fix, nobody else can fix, and we have to trust him. And so the question is, am I going to trust him or am I going to get out of, all out of shape and say, why, God, have you allowed this to happen in my life? So our purpose in this message is not to answer why, but how do you respond? 
So these are a number of ways you could respond. Now, the second question is, do I even have a right to ask God why? So let's think about it for a moment. It's a natural response. God, why would you let this happen to me? Why would you let this happen to my child? Why would you let, why would you let this happen to me financially? Oh, we have a right to ask the question why. But you can't stop there. And once you and I get past the why and begin to concentrate on the real question is, how am I to respond to this? Because the way I respond will make what I suffer valuable or invaluable. If I don't respond correctly, then I'm going to lose an awesome opportunity of blessing. If I respond in the right fashion, I can ask him what he's up to. But my faith, my trust, my surrender, my yieldedness must absolutely overpower all these questions I may have. Remember this. Every test, every trial in life, no matter what the nature of it is, it involves my faith. Do I believe him or do I not believe him? Am I going to trust him or not going to trust him? He won't tell me why. He didn't give me any understanding. But how, how am I going to respond? Well, we remember back in Isaiah uh, 55, what he said, he said, now my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Think about what that means. That means no matter how I may think through things, God knows what I cannot know. No matter what the situation or circumstance, God knows it perfectly. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than your ways, which is his way of saying, you won't ever figure some things out, but I've got them figured out and I'm going to be with you in it. And what I want you to do is I want you to grow in every single circumstance of life. And think about this. Why waste the time of hurting and pain and suffering and whether it's financial or physical or emotional, why waste all that time and not get anything from it when you can profit from every single heartache, burden, and trial? Now, some time ago, I was walking through my house just like I would normally do, and um, I tripped and fell. I don't know why I tripped one foot against the other. And uh, so here I'm lying in the floor, and I'm lying there. I can tell you exactly what I thought. <laughs> it's funny today, but it wasn't funny then. <laughs> and that is, I ask, God, what are you up to at this point? That was my first response. Well, what are you up to? Well, he was up to me uh, soon getting in an ambulance. And uh, I can tell you how many times I've been blessed during this painful time. And so... Um, I broke a couple of places in my pelvis and did something to my shoulder and, and also to my knee and all of that. But I did not have to have an operation. God let me fall, but he could have let me hit my head and so forth. And so I, I had some things to be thankful for, though I, I was hurting. And I, I thank you, God. But my first question was, God, what are you up to? Because here's my personal conviction. I mean, a lot of folks would not agree. My personal conviction is if you're walking in the Spirit of God, there are no accidents. God is in control of your life. He knows what he's up to. He doesn't promise to give you any answers, but he promises to be with you. But the first response was, God, what are you up to? And I think that ought to be the response for everybody when something happens. What are you up to? Not what have I done? What's this? But God, what are you up to? And so he's in the process of doing something good in our life. And you know, one of the good things in my behalf is this. I've studied the Word of God long enough to know what to expect in certain situations and circumstances. And that is, I knew that God had something in mind Though I didn't like what was happening, though I knew I was going to miss uh, a, a few very pleasant things and uh, didn't know I was going to miss it all, but I knew that God had stopped me for a reason. Now remember this, when God stops you, he stops us for some specific reason. And so I began to ask him, Lord, what are you saying to me? The most important thing he said to me was five weeks later, he stopped me. He said, you need to slow down. You need to slow down. Well, I didn't think I was moving very fast that morning, but that wasn't the issue. The issue, I've been moving fast all of my life, and I did understand that. But it took five weeks later, 
before he said, this is the reason I stopped you. And so I can say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The moment I fell, I knew God was up to something. From a human point of view, anybody could say, yes, you just tripped and fell. Well, that's true from a human point of view. But thank God I didn't let it stop there but ask him, Lord, what are you up to? And while he didn't tell me then, and while he let some time go by, you know what? God was still being good, no matter what. And the big question is, as we began, not, God, why did you let this happen? But how am I to respond to all this? So I'm going to give you two or three verses of Scripture in a moment. I want you to be sure to jot them down. Immediately, remember, when something happens, the first thought ought to be that you're a child of God, and he's watching over you. It doesn't make any difference what happens. That, listen, that doesn't come and go. You may feel God's presence, or you may not feel God's presence, but if you're a child of God, he knows what's happening, and he knows exactly where you are in his plan and purpose for your life. The second thing, how we should respond is this. Immediately, we should recall what God says, I am with you always. So I know he's with me. I know he's present. I know he's there. I'm in his presence. You're in his presence. No matter what's happening, you're in the presence of God. So he knows what's happening. And we need to recall that and remember that. In other words, our first thoughts ought not to be this and that and some other things, but it ought to be all about God. Thank you, Father. I'm in your presence. Thank you. You know what you're doing, and you know why you're letting this happen. Whatever's happening is in his sight, in his presence, and in his permissive will. He is allowing it to happen no matter what. And then, of course, uh, acknowledge the fact that whatever the reason is, he's doing it with some divine purpose. That is, he has a purpose. This isn't some accident. He has a purpose. I know he's with me. I know he knows my heart. He said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. So therefore, God, I know there's a purpose for this, and I'm going to trust you, whatever it is. And then thank him. You say, can you really and truly thank him for these things? Yes, you can. Because what happens is he'll show you something you can be thankful for. I can be thankful I didn't fall down the steps. I can be thankful that I didn't trip and fall and hurt somebody else. I, didn't, I can be thankful that I wasn't unconscious. I could have fallen unconscious and lying there till somebody found me. Watch this. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Giving, listen, he says, giving thanks in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Because there will be something, and I just mentioned two or three things I could be thankful for. Whatever's going on in your life, you can be thankful. And so, this is why I say to you week after week, you should start the day off with the Word of God. It's like ammunition, because Satan may shoot at you in some way or the other, or you come to some trial or some heartache. But if the Word of God is in your mind, on your lips, in your heart, in your spirit, immediately God is going to bring it to your mind. Give, he says, giving thanks always for everything in Christ Jesus. A second verse that I thought about came to my mind. I thought, well, Lord, and I'm always thinking, here's what I've preached to others. What does he say in Romans 8, 28? God causes all things to work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. So, listen, when you've got the Word of God in your heart, here's what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit is going to bring to your mind what you need to be reminded of at that moment. And so those verses came to my mind. I'm to give thanks and everything. God, you know what I'm feeling. I'm giving, I'm going to thank you anyway. You said you always have a purpose. You're going to work it for my good. I don't know what that is. I'm going to thank you, God, and no matter what. And then uh, I come back to our original scripture here in uh, verse 10 of First Peter chapter 5. After you've suffered for a little while, you say, well, how long is a little while? <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. After you've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, listen, the God of all grace, 
who called you to his eternal glory in Christ. We're talking about Christians now. Will, watch this. Will himself, not somebody else, will himself do four things in your life. Perfect you, confirm you, strengthen you, and establish you. And so what's he really saying about all this? He's really saying this. God's going to work something good in your life. And what he does, he uses four different words to say, this is what God is going to do. He's going to perfect, he's going to complete something he had in mind for you. He's going to establish you. He's going to strengthen you. That is, watch this. Any trial that comes in our life, you and I should not end up like it started. Strengthen, establish you, perfect you, work complete you. These are the things that God is doing in your life. And so when I think about that, then I think about, yes, I can thank him for it. Because what he's doing is revealing his will and purpose and plan. And somebody asked me, uh, several people asked me, um, you, you wouldn't do that again, would you? If I could get the same results, yes. If I could get the same results, yes. Do I like it? No. And I think my worst night was in a hospital looking at a wall which was very close. And it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. And the devil was there, naturally, saying, look at you now. Look at you now. You may never walk again. Who cares now? And then I realized, Satan, forget it because that's not who I'm following. And God just began to give me these verses of Scripture, verses that are so simple, giving thanks and everything. Listen, after about four or five verses, you know what? The wall wasn't all that close and the room wasn't all that dark because God was there. That's the reason. So all of this depends upon your relationship to God. If you've never trusted Him as your Savior, think about this. You've got to go through trials and heartaches and burdens by yourself. Your friends can help you to some degree, but not fully. They can't do anything these three or four verses can do for you. Giving thanks always for all things. God causes all things to work together for good. I knew he'd cause something good to come out of this. Did that stop the pain? No. But it made me assured of this. There's a limitation to it. And God sets a limitation to every trial, every heartache, every burden. We just have to respond the right way. And so I would say to you this morning, if you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, you're going to go through some difficulty, hardship, and pain. And that's the world you and I live in. Think about it. What kind of world we live in. And not only that, you say, well, I don't think that, that that'll necessarily happen to me. If you're not saved, let's hope it does. So it'll drive you to Jesus. Because whatever it takes to get you to God is good, no matter what that might be. Or if you are a believer this morning, and you've been going through difficulty and hardship and pain and arguing with God about it and giving Him a lot of questions, maybe you ought to just take these notes and go over them yourself and work on two or three of these verses. Now watch this. The Word of God, the Word of God is like a shield to us that no matter how fiery and hot the trial may be, the Word of God is like a shield. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to cause this to turn out something good. I'm building strength in your life. I'm building confidence in your life. And I am build, I'm establishing you in your faith. God always has something good if we trust Him. Thanks for joining us today for In Touch, the teaching ministry of Dr. Charles Stanley. Romans 8, verse 28 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. That means believers can be confident, knowing that all the things we face are within God's control. To learn more about the Lord's purpose for your pain, Stop by InTouch.org for devotions, Bible-based study tools, and relevant articles to help bring God's work in your life into focus. And that's where you can order a copy of today's complete message, When We Don't Understand Why. 
Again, that's intouch.org. Or call 1 800 In Touch. You can write to us at In Touch, Post Office Box 7900, Atlanta, Georgia 30357. Sorrows and heartaches are unavoidable, and God can use them to strengthen us. Today's moment with Charles Stanley is coming up. We have a divine obligation to touch the hearts of every generation. That's why I'm excited to introduce you to Wonder More from In Touch Ministries. What do you get when you combine four best friends, fun adventures, and a magical playland? Wonder More. In Touch Ministries brings you an all-new series that focuses on teaching the next generation about friendship, kindness, and God's love. Follow George, Millie, Whirly, Yimsy, and the rest of the Wonder More family as they play, sing, and learn, all while being in a fantastical playland. Wonder More's lovable characters and exciting stories promote healthy social-emotional learning with Christian values and will keep your preschooler coming back for more. Wonder More. For more information, go to wondermorekids.com. Are you trying to merely get through your difficulties? A believer can learn something in the process. Here's a moment with Charles Stanley. Why waste your pain? Why waste your sorrows? Why waste your hurt? If I don't grow through my hurt and my pain, my sorrow and my disappointment, if I don't grow through it, it's sort of wasted. And I've just suffered and gained nothing. Every thing that happens, there is an opportunity for me to learn something. And if you'll turn to 2 Corinthians for a moment, because the Apostle Paul doesn't spend his time wasting his time, for example, trying to figure out what happened. And you'll recall in this 12th chapter, listen to what he says. Uh, he's talking about all the things that have been going on. Then he says, he didn't ask God, why did you let this happen to me? Why all this suffering, imprisonment, all of these things? He says in the second Corinthians chapter 12 and the seventh verse. He answers the question, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, getting proud, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan. Listen, he says, to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Paul knew and understood why God allowed all the things that happened to him. And so watch this. When these things happened to him, I'm certain he had to ask the question, why? But the Apostle Paul was godly enough and listening carefully enough and listening enough times and talking to the Father and being sensitive to what was going on to say, I understand what was happening. God has so blessed me. He's given me so much information. He, he's given me so much opportunity. Uh, and on and on he could go. Now I know why these things are happening. They're happening to keep me from being prideful, egotistical, or from losing the opportunity of impacting people for centuries to come. Learn more from the Apostle Paul and other people in Scripture at intouch.org. If you missed any of today's message, or if you'd like to hear it again, visit our website. You can also stream previous messages from the audio archives or download a variety of podcasts. Find these and many other resources at intouch.org. And if you were challenged or encouraged by today's program, we'd love to hear your story. We all face pain and difficulty, but God doesn't intend for us to endure anything alone. Tomorrow's program shows us where to find the courage to face life's trials. I hope you'll join us Thursday for In Touch, the teaching ministry of Dr. Charles Stanley. This program is a presentation of In Touch Ministries, Atlanta, Georgia, and remains on this station through the grace of God.